right, next up we've got text specific tools. Now looking at the transform tab of the Power Query editor, um, at the end you've got this little section with a grouping of tools that says text column at the bottom. Now this is dynamic because it depends on the column that you're selecting. So Power Query does a nice job grouping tools into text tools and data tools and date tools. Um, so you won't always see the exact same set of tools no matter what. Again, it's dynamic based on what you have selected. So here are some common text tools that we can use. We've got the split column options where you can either split by a delimiter or by a fixed number of characters. You've got formatting tools where you can change to uppercase, lowercase, proper case, which is capitalizing each word. So a little tip here, trim and clean are actually really helpful ones. And if you've taken my formulas and functions course, you may remember me talking about trim quite a bit. The thing about trim is that it gets rid of any leading or trailing spaces. So not spaces between words or letters, but a space at the very beginning of a string or the very end. And the reason that's so important is that as a human being with human being eyeballs, I can't see the difference between one string with a space at the end and another without. But to Excel, that looks like two completely different values. So sometimes as a best practice, if I'm dealing with kind of messy text data, um, I'll just run it through a trim to make sure I don't have any of those uh, leading or trailing spaces. Similar case with clean, that also removes any non-printable characters like symbols and things like that. You also have extract options. You can extract characters from a text column uh, using a fixed length, first or last, or a defined range of characters. And just note, you'll see those two other options, merge columns and parse. They're grayed out right now. In order to enable those, you have to have two or more columns uh, selected. So again, this, these toolbars are, are pretty dynamic based on what you're looking at. Now, last thing I want to cover is this important box. So Whenever you see one of these yellow boxes pop up, and you'll see quite a few throughout the course. That means that I'm about to tell you something that I think is a pretty critical concept. So when you see that box, make sure you kind of take a deep breath, stop checking Facebook or email, and just think through this because these are the concepts that you really need to grasp if you want to become a true ninja with these tools. So first important box here. Um, is that you can access many of these tools, in fact, sometimes the same entire set of tools, in both the transform and the add column menus. The difference is whether you want to add a new column or use the tool to modify an existing one which you've selected. So you'll find that it's very easy, especially as you're first learning Power Query, to use the wrong version of a tool because you're accidentally in the transform tab instead of the add column tab. Now the good news is that nothing's permanent. You just click the mouse to remove the step and you, you've basically gotten back to where you started. But that was something that kind of threw me off for a while and confused me because I kept seeing duplicate tools all over the place and it took a while to realize, okay, that's why, because they live in both the transform and the add column menus. So with that, let's jump back to Excel and open up our second CSV file. Okay, here we are in the Food Mart data model Excel workbook. This is the one I just saved in the last lecture. You can see I'm just gonna keep this workbook query pane open. And you can see I've got my customer lookup sitting right there. Let's go back into the data tab, new query from file, CSV. And this time I want the store lookup. So I'll just double click, preview looks fine. Always go into edit. And now those two steps that we always start with. Number one, check the table name store underscore lookup looks good it's clear it's simple it's concise and there's no spaces so i'm cool with it next up i check my column headers check and now i look at the data types so store id is a number id is a number text 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 scrolling through phone numbers text which is good open date remodel date both dates and we've got two numerical fields that are whole numbers, so this all looks good. And just to give you a sense, the last file we opened up was all about customers. So we had first names, last names, addresses, how many children, whether they were married or a homeowner. That was called the customer lookup for a reason, it gave us customer related information. This is the store lookup, so it's giving us all sorts of information about 
a number of different stores. And there's one store marked by a store ID per row. And this is going to become very, very important as soon as we get into the data modeling section. So just kind of put that in your back pocket and we'll readdress it uh, very soon. So now as far as transformations or data shaping is concerned, there's not a whole lot I really need to do here. Um, just to demonstrate, let's say we've got the store country column and we'd prefer to see this all uppercase instead of proper case. Maybe we head to the add column tab and we go into the format options and say, yeah, let's make this all uppercase. And then we say, oh no, we were in add column. So it created a new duplicate column of the country that's by default named uppercase. And that's not really what I want because I don't need the old version and the new version. So the good news is that you don't hit control Z, the equivalent of hitting control Z to undo is simply to go into your applied steps and press this little X. And it just takes me right back to where I was. So now I can select that store country column again. And now instead of grabbing the format tool from the add column tab, I'm going to go into transform and I'll find my text tools right here again, format uppercase. And that's a lot better. It just overwrote the column that was already there. Next up, let's take a look at these address columns. We've got street address, city, state, and country. I think I'd like to create a single column with full address that includes the street, the city, and the state. So I can go ahead and select all three. In this case, I do want to create a brand new column. And as you can see, the only tool that's actually active among my text tools is merge columns. So let's open up the merge columns dialog box and let's separate each of these values with a comma and we can name that new field right here. So to be consistent, it looks like I'm using lowercase with underscores. So I'm going to type full address right here and press OK. And it always throws it right at the end. So there's full address. Looks pretty good, but you know what? I don't like that there's no space here. So instead of deleting that step and redoing it, I can press the gear here instead. That lets me edit the step because I know I want the same tools. I just want to tweak it a little bit. So instead of comma, I'm going to go into custom and now type a comma followed by a space. Now I press OK. There you go. It spaced it out beautifully. And now I'm happy with that full address column. Last little demo here before we load. Why don't we take a look at the store phone number column? And in this case, we've got looks like a area code at the beginning, followed by three digits, followed by four. So this might be a good chance to use some of the extract tools. So if we wanted to extract maybe the first three and create a new column called area code, we can certainly do that. We'll head into the add column tab, extract first characters. And it just lets you plug in a count. So let's say let's extract the first three characters, drops it into a new column here. We can call it area code if we'd like. And that seemed to do the trick. But what if we wanted to get a little bit more complex? And what if there were cases where maybe the area code contained more than three digits and it was every digit up to the first dash? Well, we can deal with that as well using the same extract tools. We'll just use text before delimiter instead of first characters. And when we do that, we set the delimiter, which in this case is just a dash. We press OK, and that will insert a new column called text before delimiter. And let's use that version instead. So we'll right click the original area code, remove it, and let's name this new one area code. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good. We've applied a number of steps here. You can actually jump through and kind of see your history as you go, which is also pretty cool. But I feel like we've got things in a pretty good place at this point. So let's go ahead and close and load this. And you can either click the home menu here, close and load, or this little button right above the menu that offers the same thing. So close and load to only the connection, add to data model, load, and we can watch it go right here in the pane. And it was a very small lookup table, only 24 unique stores in the sample. So we're good to go. Let's take a peek at the data model. We now have a second tab with our store data. And you can see that it's 
preserved all of the changes we made. There's our uh, uppercase country. If we scroll to the end, we should see our full address and our zip code. So great news there. Let's close this out and go ahead and give our workbook a save. And there you go, text specific tools.